Good morning. Welcome to your Wednesday morning, early morning intuitive guidance. I'm Dr. Bonnie Nossbaum, America's kick-ass coach and psychologist. Here with some words to start our day off well and give us something to think about, to chew on during the course of the day. So our card deck for today is The Wild Offering Deck by Tosha Silver. And again, if you haven't read her book, um, Outrageous Openness, please do so because it's a whole different perspective on living and life. And she also has a book called It's Not Your Money, which is the basic gist that everything belongs to the universe. We're borrowing it as it moves through us onto wherever it's meant to go and that there's always enough. There's always enough. So two great books to check out if you haven't yet. But our card for today, I think, is going to be relevant to a lot of us and hopefully you give it a little bit of time to resonate within and determine are you looking at this through an inappropriate lens through a lens that sets you up to feel bad instead of to feel good good morning carolyn glad you are here welcome welcome so <clears throat> a couple of nice deep breaths just to settle into receiving the message today in through the nose out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Just letting your shoulders drop, wiggling a little bit just to loosen everything up, making um, your mind, body, spirit receptive to this message. So again, our, our card deck is Wild Offerings from Tosha Silver. And our card for today, which has some pretty little blue flowers on it, is loneliness, loneliness. So when you first hear that word, what pops into your head? Probably this dull, achy feeling within that sense of something's just not quite right, the, the a boredom, etc. right? Maybe a sadness that kind of goes along with loneliness as opposed to aloneness. And that's the energetic shift she's asking us to make today is from that sense of it being lonely to alone. So let's see what she says. When you stop fearing your aloneness, you stop settling for less than you deserve. May I embrace and love my solitude, and that's when kindred spirits can finally come. Good morning to whomever else has popped on. So let me read that again, and then we'll kind of unpack it a bit. When you stop fearing your aloneness, you stop settling for less than you deserve. May I embrace and love my solitude. And that's when kindred spirits can finally come. All right, so first thing to notice there is she's differentiating between aloneness and loneliness. Aloneness is a state of being. Loneliness is a feeling that we create when we tell ourselves something about aloneness. Oftentimes, too, we can feel very lonely when we're surrounded by people. So it really isn't, good morning, Linda, it really isn't about that state of being alone that's the only trigger for people feeling loneliness. And that second part I thought really packed a wallop, okay? When you stop fearing your aloneness, you stop settling for less than you deserve. Good morning, Janine. Glad you are here. Think about that. When you don't want to be lonely, what do you do? You hook up with people that maybe you really don't want to spend time with. You fall into habits that don't serve you well. You um, think of one person who her main way of addressing her loneliness because her husband worked many hours but she went to the casino tens of thousands of dollars a year it didn't serve her but it was and it really wasn't quality companionship connection right you're just it's basically what what um, developmental psychologists would call parallel play you're sitting beside someone doing something. You're not really interacting much, um, but it gives you that illusion of being with people, right? <clears throat> 
So when you stop fearing your aloneness, you stop settling for less than you deserve. So think about that. What if you were to embrace your aloneness? At this point in time, the universe is setting it up that I am alone. Isn't this interesting? What am I feeling about being alone? Is that an okay thing with me? Or am I telling a story that makes it not okay? And if, good morning, Deb, glad you are here. Our card for today is loneliness. And if I am telling myself a story that makes being alone not okay, <clears throat> what am I willing to do about that? Am I willing to change my storyline? Am I willing to um, explore why I'm alone at this point in time? Am I willing to look into that aloneness, to kind of sidle up to it, to be with it, to see, is there something here for me? Because then if we look at the next lines, may I embrace and love my solitude. And that's when kindred spirits can finally come. When we can embrace the, the half of the whole that is us being alone, then we can create the other half of the whole, which is us being a part of, a part of a couple, a part of a group, a part of a family, a part of a team, whatever it is, okay? So what are your thoughts on aloneness? Does it equate equally in your mind with loneliness? Or are you all right being on your own? Some of us, I'm one of them, I like being social, I like being out, but then I must balance that with some time for myself, with quiet, with meditation, with journaling, with whatever. If I don't have the balance, things get out of whack for me. What about for you? There are those people who really recharge being around others, and they may be a little more um, sad when they're alone. Those people I would like to help embrace aloneness. There's much to be learned in aloneness. The same way there's much to be learned when we're around a bunch of people or when we're around someone who's important to us, right? So to have the bigger picture, to have the whole, we need to have access to all of those parts. There are some people who crave aloneness simply because they never get it. A mom. Pretty much you're attached 24-7 at the hip with your child. And yep, Deb says she's the same. I love my people, love my alone space. Yes, the balance. And for different people, there's a different amount of balance. There are some people who are much more naturally inclined toward being alone. They'll do their little forays out into the people world, but they're much more satisfied with life when they have a huge chunk of alone time. We each need to find our own balance with that, all right? Yep, Carolyn says, as I get older, alone time is my replenishing time. It gives me comfort. Yes, I have a friend who oftentimes, when she comes home from work, she'll put her pajamas on and that's the end of her day. She just wants to have quiet. What works for you? What fills you up? Pay attention when you're in the alone circumstance. Are you feeling good or are you feeling something not so good? If something not so good, again, I want you to mind that a little bit. That doesn't mean that being alone isn't okay. It may mean you're telling yourself a storyline about being alone that makes it not okay. All right? But today's, today's word is loneliness. So I want us to just explore that. Take some time. When do you tend to feel lonely? Some people, it's on their way to work. Some people, it's that night when they crawl in bed. Some people, it's when they're surrounded by people. Figure out when are the times that you tend to feel lonely. Then take a look at what are you telling yourself about those times. I don't, so if it's a time when you're around a lot of people, I don't fit in here, I'm not comfortable here. What are you telling yourself that sets it up that you're more likely to frame that as loneliness, all right? Um, and in there, again, can be some really important observations. So let's say it's your work situation and you feel lonely and you mine that a little bit and you realize 
this job really isn't a good fit for me. It's no wonder I'm not resonating with these people. This isn't a good fit for me. And begin the process of looking for something that fits better. It's out there. It's out there. Again, watch the storylines that you're telling yourself. Well, it's hard to get a job these days, or I won't find anything in my field, or I won't get paid what I'm getting paid now, or blah, 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 blah. I always go back to the Tosha Silver story where she's talking about needing an apartment in San Francisco, which at that time had a 3% open rate on rentals. And all of her friends telling her, you're never going to find anything, you're never going to find anything that's appropriate, blah, blah, blah. Walking down the street one day and there's some guy standing there and there's a sign beside him that says that there's this penthouse apartment available. And she's like, well, what the hell? I might as well ask. Asks him about it. He hauls her up and shows her the apartment. She loves it. He says that he was raised a street kid in some other country and he was very good at reading people. He had to be in order to survive on the streets of this country. And when he saw her, he thought, She's the one who needs this apartment. He, he rented it to her for half of what it was worth, just because all of the pieces fell into place. So never say never, right? Never say never. That's one of the primary things I'm taking out of this class that I started yesterday is there's always a solution. There's always a solution in there somewhere. And we don't necessarily find it when we push hard to find it. It may be like she did, opening herself for the solution to come. The divine right solution is already picked. It's on its way to me. It will arrive in divine right timing and divine right order. I'm so happy and grateful to receive it. All right? Same thing with the loneliness. When you embrace and love solitude, that's when kindred spirits can finally come. Spirit, allow me the, the aloneness that is divinely right for me. And when it's time for others to come into my life, Allow me to be open to receiving them. Good enough, right? So today your mission is explore aloneness and when you allow yourself aloneness and what you like about aloneness and what solitude brings you. And if you don't like aloneness, maybe looking at what story am I telling myself and can I change that story such that I'm more comfortable and can benefit from what aloneness brings me. Have an awesome day. See you again tomorrow. Remember you're capable of far more than you think you are. Bye-bye.